The world's last known male northern white rhino is under 24-hour armed guard in a Kenyan wildlife sanctuary. Joining us now from Kenya to discuss the desperate efforts to save this beautiful species is the CEO of the Ol Pajeta Sanctuary, Richard Vine. Richard, thanks so much for being with us. That's a pleasure. Good evening. So can you tell us how Sudan is doing? This is the 42-year-old male white rhino you have under your protection right now. Uh, yeah, no, sure. He's an old animal, and uh, that, that needs to be understood. He's 42 years old. Uh, in the wild, that would be a very old rhino. The fact that he's in captivity is the reason he's still alive. Um, but he's okay. He's um, fit and healthy and pampered. Um, so we hope that he will continue to live uh, for a little bit longer to come. And now, we know his horn was removed to make him less valuable to poachers, correct? I mean, how bad is the situation with poachers in general right now there in East Africa? Um, I find it, interestingly, Kenya has actually done incredibly well um, from an anti-poaching perspective, both with regards rhinos and elephants. Um, the situation, however, in other parts of Africa, particularly with regard to elephants, is is dire, particularly in Central Africa, uh, places like Tanzania. Um, and with rhinos, well, you know, it, the, the pressure has been there for the last five years. Uh, it's as a result of increasing demand from an increasingly affluent Far East. Uh, South Africa lost over a thousand rhinos. Uh, last year. So it's it's critical um, and the pressure is constant. And so how did it get to this point with the northern white rhino? Why didn't the alarm go out when there were 10 males or five males left? Why why at this point is the world finding out about it? Yeah, I know, you know, we, we rang the alarm bells about 10 years ago when there were still 25 or 30 animals left in a place called the Garamba National Park uh, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And we tried to take 10 from from that that area. Uh, to safeguard the species uh, at that time. Unfortunately, it got mired in politics, but the problem with the northern white rhino is its, it's, it's, it's uh, geographic range has been in parts of Africa, um, DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo being a good example, uh, which have been pretty insecure and unstable for long periods of time over the past 20 to 30 years. And it's for that reason that that species has been reduced to the brink of extinction. And now you also have under your care two female northern white rhinos, is that correct? What are the plans going forward to try and impregnate them? Um, yeah, the, 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 there's lots of problems, and I won't try and bore you with the science of it. Suffice for them to get pregnant naturally is almost impossible. So what we're probably going to have to do is uh, exactly what happens in females, in fact, uh, in female humans, which would be uh, referred to as in vitro fertilization. Um, in other words, removal of the eggs, removal of semen from Sudan, plus also from other uh, stored semen banks, uh, northern white rhino uh, semen banks around the world, um, to create embryos, which would then be re-implanted, not into the two northern whites that we have here, uh, but into southern white surrogate females, uh, those two species being quite closely related, uh, meaning that they can carry northern white calves. And that, that's the only way uh, probably that we can make this happen. Uh, the problem with it is that the protocol and technique for making uh, in vitro fertilization happen in rhinos has yet to be developed. So the first step for us is to develop that in southern white rhinos, probably in South Africa, and then um, use that technique as it's developed in the remaining northern white rhinos, uh, assuming they're still alive, um, uh, as quickly as we can. Oh, and the clock is ticking because, as you say, Sudan is 42 years old. Now, there is a crowdfunding campaign going on right now to help. Is this money going to this research? Yeah, you know, what we'll do is we need to raise somewhere in the region of a million dollars to make this happen, to save the species. Um, it's all very complicated. It's going to take uh, between 18 uh, to 24 months at the very least. Um, the, so there's two things we need to do. We need to raise money to make that happen. But we've also got to continue to raise money on a regular basis to protect rhinos, uh, not only the northern white rhinos that uh, we're talking about now, but also um, the, 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 the other rhinos on the Old Pejita Conservancy. Uh, we're the largest black rhino sanctuary in East Africa. Um, and the costs of security, given the poaching pressure, are ginormous and getting greater. So we need to continue to raise money on, on a regular basis to safeguard all of our rhinos, as well as uh, to try to rescue the northern white rhino from the brink of extinction. And so, Richard, where can people go who want to help out? Very simple. Uh, uh, they can go to our website. If you type in Old Pajeta, you'll be taken there, obviously. The other uh, fund we've set up is uh, called GoFundMe. Uh, dot com forward slash old pegeta um, and there's a there's a uh, there's a lot of funds coming in there now actually uh, given the publicity we've had so uh, the more 
the more that we can make from there, um, the better it will be for our security and also for the long-term uh, security and, and future of the northern white rhinos. Absolutely. And good luck, Richard. We are all rooting for Sudan and this beautiful species. Thanks for all the work you're doing. Thanks very much for your interest.